Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this portrait of this spaniel. Now this is going to focus more on the wetter fur but also the background portion of this portrait. In the reference photo you can see the tree line and then of course the water in the background. Now for this portrait, to still make sure that the dog remained the main focus, I did soften and blur my background a little more than what could be seen in the reference photo. Now this is something that I will do if I do think that the background does complement the artwork but that potentially it might still be a little bit distracting. If I want that subject to be the main focus all I will do is apply a Gaussian blur to the background section, really help to soften that out and that will help to then bring your subject further forward and more in focus. So to apply the pastel pigment to my paper I am using my eye makeup applicators. Now your soft tool sponges would also work here. At the time of doing this portrait, I didn't have any of the pan pastels, so I am using my sanded soft pastel stick method. And because I was happy with the effect that I was creating here, I decided to then make the rest of the tree line as a real-time tutorial for Patreon. So if you'd like to see how I do create this effect here from the very beginning right until the last layers, I'll put my Patreon channel in the description below. And as I say, that tutorial is all in real time, so you can see exactly how I'm creating this technique. Now my biggest tip when you are focusing on this kind of effect is to go with a random look. You don't want the, the, the top of the tree line to be straight, you don't want it to have too many harsh edges. You also want to use a few greens. You'll notice here that I've got at least three greens. You want to start off with a dark green, then a mid green and then of course a brighter green. Now depending on the type of light source you're going with, the time of day that that reference photo was taken on, the greens that you're going to be using are going to vary. For me here, I went with something that was more on the yellower, warmer end of the colour wheel. So here I'm actually using more than three greens. I had between five and six. I wanted to make sure that I had some yellower greens in there as well so that I could bring up those warmer highlights. But the one thing you'll notice is everything is random. My shadows, my highlights, there is no straight lines as I say and that's really important. In nature, nothing is straight. You know, even trees and the trunks, they are not straight. There's going to be a slight curve or, um, you know, they're going to be slightly to the side, a little bit more on the diagonal. There is no straight lines, especially on anything like this. Now, for me, I decided I didn't want to use my pastel pencils at all on this section because I would then be tempted to add too much detail. If you're trying to create a blurry effect, I do like just using this application with my soft tools rather than using my pastel pencils. That's, that can be a little bit more down to personal preference, but I do find that if you are using your pastel pencils for this kind of technique, we have a tendency of adding too much detail without really noticing it until you've got a little bit further along in the portrait. You then need to go back and soften things, which although it's fine, you'll still get the outcome you want by doing that, you have just created an extra process and the portrait will take a little bit longer. So when I started on the water section here, I had to make sure that I got the reflection of the trees in that water to start with. I didn't want there to be a harsh start and stop point between the water, particularly on this side. Now, of course, that is going to vary depending on your light source. So you really want to be making sure you're studying that. Now, water is one of the more complex elements to get right. So like with any portrait, if you've seen my videos here on YouTube, you know that I do like to break everything down into small sections and working on water is no exception. Water is a very complex element to get right and it can be very overwhelming. So you saw there that to the right of the dog, I was working on that one section of water. I'm now gonna work on the left around the nose and the mouth. Once I get this bit about 80% complete, I'm gonna move on to the next. One thing that I have done though with here, this section, this is considerably lighter than the green reflections on the right. So I'm working from light to dark. Now this is something that I will do depending on the element that I am working on. It won't necessarily be for the entire portrait either. For the tree line I worked from dark to light. But with this water, if I did start with my darker greens and then added my lighter blues on top, you're not going to then get the pure blue colour that I am able doing it with this order. You will of course be able to get it to a degree, but because you'll have a darker green layer down to start with or even a darker blue, when you do go and add these brighter colours on top, you're not going to be able to get them as bright as what you will do if you start off with your brightest colour first. So that is just certainly my preference. 
I will do certain fur colours like this as well. I've got a video here on YouTube of a yellow Labrador and that is a prime example where I did work from light to dark for exactly the same reasons. So if that video is of use I will link that in the description below. So once I've got that lighter colour down, I'm then going to go over the top with my various pencils there to start mapping in more of my darker midtones. These are still not my darkest colours that I can see in the water. All I'm trying to do here is start to indicate at the water and the pattern of the water. The way that it ripples is all about the abstract shapes. Now my biggest tip when you are working on water is don't think of it as water because our brain will think right I know what that looks like and you start drawing it how you think it should be rather than following that reference photo. Work on small sections and if you need to turn your artwork upside down and rotate your reference photo upside down your brain will then be forced to see it for the shapes that it is rather than thinking of it as water. So here I am applying a soft pastel stick directly to the paper. This is something that I don't do very often because you can fill the tooth of the paper very quickly and very early on. What that will do is limit the amount of layers you can get on top so when you come to add your details you're going to find that some of the pencils will almost glide over that surface. The pigment will look like it's struggling to come off that pencil and usually when that's happening it is because you filled the tooth of the paper. Now when that happens you do have a couple of options, you can use a workable fixative to apply tooth back to the top of the paper but always being aware that you need to be really careful of how you apply the fixatives. Too much of that fixative and your details, your work is just potentially going to vanish, it's happened to me once before. Fixatives will also adjust the colour slightly and your values, so some of your whiter colours for instance may potentially look a little bit more on the greyer side. Now of course if you're not finished with that artwork that's potentially not so much of an issue because you're going to be putting future layers on top so you can adjust your colour again but it is something to be aware of. The other option of course is to start over. Now once you've already come this far on the portrait that probably isn't going to be the best option you've already put many hours into it so a workable fixative would be worth a try. But my biggest tip when you are using a fixative is you know, hold your hand a good decent distance away from your artwork and use light layers. You're better off doing three or four lighter layers of that fixative, wait for it to dry in between each layer rather than applying one thicker heavier layer. If you would like to see how I tackle water I do have a tutorial on Patreon, I'll put a little thumbnail in the corner of a Labrador portrait where I have uploaded the entire water section as a long full length tutorial so if you would like to see that as I say my Patreon is in the description below. I do also have a YouTube version of that portrait which I'll link in the description as well. So when it comes to my subject, as you know if you've seen my other videos here you'll know that I always start off with the eye first. I think it's really important, it's the soul and the expression of that animal. It can really make or break a portrait. So for that reason I do like to make sure I do them first and that they are accurate. I can then move on with the rest of the portrait. So in this case I am going to be working from dark to light. Now the one main difference when you're trying to paint and um, sorry when you're trying to draw wet fur is your contrasts. You want to make sure that your shadows are really dark but that your highlights are also really bright. This contrast here is going to make that fur look wet. Because it's wet it's going to be far more reflective. So you can see here more of my highlights are grouped together. I've got a lot more of my shadows showing through in more of a thicker denser way compared to if this dog was dry. The longer coated the dog, like a German Shepherd for instance, this effect is going to be more exaggerated. But because the Springer Spaniel has a little bit more of that shorter fur on the face, it's going to be more of those shorter, narrower, sharp highlights. Whereas with a German Shepherd, you're going to have more of that wetter fur clumped together. You will see some of that on the ear section when we get to it on this portrait. If you're drawing wet fur on any of your portraits and you're finding that you're happy with the pencil strokes you've created but it doesn't have that look of wet fur, it will usually be because your contrasts are not right. Make your shadow slightly darker and those highlights even brighter and it will naturally therefore make the fur look wet. The first couple of portraits that we do where the fur is wet, we have a tendency to force too many individual fur details in on the fur itself. What that will do is give the illusion then that the fur is drier. When the fur is wet it does naturally clump together so we want to make sure that we're capturing that in our drawing. So something that can happen fairly easily with pastels is muddying up of your layers. So here this section on his face would be a prime example of that. 
Now, when I want to keep my layers and the colours that I'm working with as pure as possible, the muddying up of the layers is something I want to really avoid. And as I say, this will be the case with most portraits, but especially wet fur. In particular, ones where you've got white markings that are up against a darker marking, like this face here in between the nose and the eye. So there are a couple of things that I will always do in my own work. When I'm using my soft sp tool sponges or my eye makeup applicators for the dark areas, I will always keep those separate from my lighter areas. The reason being, because this wet fur does need to have such a sharp contrast, I don't want my base layers here with this white fur to be too dark. If of course I had used a dirty sponge and then I go to apply my white pencils on top, I'm not going to have the same brightness in this section of the fur. Now it seems like one of those things that you would think would be an obvious solution but it's very easy to pick up the wrong applicator so when I am working on something like this I will always keep the two separate. And for the section on the very top of the bridge of the nose I have gone in with a very light near on whiter layer for my first base layer and then gradually went down to my darks as it got closer to the mouth. Again, the reason being, I really want to hype up this contrast. The top section of the nodes needs to be really bright. So I didn't want to go in with a darker base layer of like a mid grey and then build my whites on top because that base layer is going to be naturally darker. So to make sure I got this area as bright and as white as I could do, I did go in with my lighter white base layer to start with. So again, it's one of those areas like with the water where for this one narrow section, I've worked from light to dark rather than dark to light. And this is the one main reason why I switched over from colour pencils, which was my primary medium, to pastels. Because you have that flexibility of layering from light to dark or dark to light within a split second if you need to, it can really help to, I think, make my portraits more realistic. Because I am able to layer my lighter details over those darks much more um, easily, it's, it's naturally how I see it in a reference photo. So for instance, when I was working on the nose area, I did see those lighter details on top of my shadows. So being able to easily work in that way, I find for me, I'm able to create more realistic fur. Now, of course, that is going to be a little bit more down to personal preference as well. I do still love colour pencils and the work that it creates. But since using my pastel pencils, I haven't looked back and I've not used my colour pencils since. And this ear section here is a prime example of that. So I'm going to be going down with a very dark base layer. You'll see then that I'm going to be adding my lighter details on top, but I'm going to be working in subtle layers. This ear is one of the darkest parts of the entire portrait. It would be one of those things where you'd think, oh, should I add more details here? But the problem is the light source is coming from the front, but almost a bit more behind the dog. So therefore the ear is going to be naturally darker. If I add too many highlights here and add too many details, I'm going to be then adjusting that light source. And then the rest of the portrait is going to look generally a little flatter. Now, one thing that I will mention, you can see that I'm using a couple of browns here and you can't see them necessarily on the video footage. But in person, you will be able to see some of those subtle layers that I do talk about in my tutorials. So I'm still making sure that I'm giving this area here, even though it is quite a bit darker, the attention that it needs. I'm not skipping any process. Just because it is darker, I'm not going down with one solid black layer and calling it finished. But now that I've got this darker part of the portrait in, now look at the contrast between the whites on the top of the nose. That here is making this artwork already look three dimensional. Now, something that I would always recommend, you can see here I'm now using my eye makeup applicators to add the grey in between the ear details that start below the neck. If I was to do this portrait again, I would actually put my grey base layer down first all the way up to the edge of the ear, draw in the fur on the neck and then add my details from the lower ear over the top of the neck. I'm still able to create the effect that I was after here, but I made it a lot more fiddly. I got very carried away with all of these details that overlap the ear. I got too engrossed in the one part that I was working on. Whereas normally what you, we should always be doing is thinking, what part of the fur overlaps the area next to it? And in this case, it would be that I had to draw the neck first because it was behind the ear. So as you can see here, I'm just having to draw around those details. They are naturally getting softer because my pencils are overlapping them slightly, but that's fine. I'm going to have to rework those details anyway, but it is just something to be aware of.
and I would have certainly have got this section of the portrait done quicker if I had done the neck first. And during my Patreon tutorials, if there's any part of the process where I think I shouldn't have done that or I made a mistake, I will always leave them in the tutorial. I never cut them out. The reason being, we all do it. We all make these tiny little mistakes. But the thing about it is, it's learning how to fix them or think, in this case, I didn't ruin anything. So it's not necessarily about fixing it. It is about, right, well, next time when I do the other portrait that's going to be similar to this, I'll know to draw the neck fur in first. And then by leaving them in the Patreon tutorials, I can then hopefully help my members there avoid that step. But these mistakes here, this is what improves us as artists. And it's the only way really we're going to develop our skills. Creating mistakes can be frustrating, but it's really important to know how to fix these mistakes so that when it does happen again on another portrait, there's no stress involved. We can go ahead and fix it. So the wetter fur on the neck here, the body section wasn't as wet as the ear, but the, you can see the fur on the neck is ruffled up, it's clumped together. I want to make sure that I've got my pencil strokes fairly harsh there. To start with, this is the complete opposite of what we would be doing if we were drawing the fur that was dry. So this is one of those instances as well where with these thicker details where the fur is clumped together, I am applying a little more pressure to my pencil to help create these thicker lines. I'm also not working with overly sharp pencils and that's probably one of the biggest tips when I'm working on wet fur. The sharper the pencil, the more tendencies we're going to have to create finer lines, which again will make the fur look dry. Working with a naturally more blunter point will help to create these slightly wider, thicker lines, which is going to help to create that clumped fur effect even easier. The fur length is also going to play a part in it as well. Going back to what I mentioned with the German Shepherd, this part here of the where the leg is joined onto the body, the fur gets shorter. So it's not got as much of that ruffled fur effect compared to the neck, where the fur starts to get a little longer as it goes up to the head. So here is a photo of the finished portrait. I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here are useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And as I've mentioned, if my slower in-depth tutorials are of use, I'll link my Patreon in the description below. I do also have a Patreon library on my website which lists all of my tutorials there so you can see if the kind of content I upload is of interest. If you've got any questions about anything art related, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help if I can and I'll be uploading another video to YouTube next week.